Africa. What sorts of images does the word evoke in you? Jungles, safaris, poverty, violence. Africa remains a largely mysterious place to many Westerners, but not to all. A growing number of firms and entrepreneurs consider Africa to be the newest land of business opportunity, an emerging market with unbelievable potential. The money we can make is matchless, said Thomas Gibeon in a Business Week article, after his firm bought 42 African companies, cashed out of 18, with gains on their investment averaging 300%. He's not alone. Graham McKay of the brewing giant, S.A.B. Miller, said in an, in an Economist interview, if there was any more of Africa, we'd be investing in it. Coca-Cola loves this continent, where Africa buys 36 billion bottles of Coke a year. How about you? Could Africa hold your next business adventure? Hello. My name is Brenda Bailey Hughes, and I welcome you to today's Cyber Focus with Dr. Samuel Abeng, Director of African Studies and Professor in Linguistics here at Indiana University. Dr. Abeng is going to help give us a truer picture of Africa, to demystify it, and to help us see where Africa and our businesses might intersect. Dr. Abeng, welcome and thank you for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Well, let's get started. When I think of the various regions in the U.S., the Northeast, Deep South, Silicon Valley, the Midwest, I have very clear pictures of those regions. I know what the major industries are. I kind of know the people. I, I can even imagine their regional dialects in my head. But I think for many of us, when you say, Africa, those unique regions are sort of a blur to us. Could you give us a Geography 101 lesson highlighting the specific business opportunities in each of those regions? Well, thank you very much uh, for this very important question. Um, Africa is a huge continent. It is not a country, it is a continent. Now, um, it is uh, bounded on the north by the Mediterranean, on the east by the Indian Ocean, mm -hmm. and on the west by the Atlantic Ocean. Africa has 54 countries. There are 54 countries that you know, make up Africa. Now, in terms of uh, regions and the uh, number of or types of business potentials that one uh, can uh, identify on the continent, we speak of North Africa, West Africa, Southern Africa, Central Africa, and East Africa. Now, um, North Africa is oftentimes, you know, kind of uh, confused. I mean, when I say confused, I'm talking about the rest of the world tends to be confused about North Africa because there are those who believe uh, it is part of the Middle East, mm -hmm. especially if you take the country uh, called Egypt. But, you know, North Africa is part of Africa uh, they are part of the African Union, and um, you know if you look at sports, you know for example, you know they are part of the African Confederation of Football. So I mean politically, uh, in terms of um, what do you call it, our religion, mm -hmm. you know in terms of ethnicity and whatever, North Africa is part of Africa. Uh, Africa has one third of the world's languages. There are 1,800 languages, oh you know, in Africa. And uh, we can also speak of there being 1,800 ethno-linguistic groups. Now, there is strength in that uh, kind of diversity. You know, many a time when people hear of, you know, that kind of, uh, of uh, diversity, you know, there's a tendency for them to be scared, but there is considerable, uh, what they call strength in, in that kind of uh, diversity. Um, and later on, I will talk more about the racial component um, of the continent. Now, in terms of business opportunities, now, if you take North Africa, um, there are places, I mean, take Egypt, you know, if one was interested in tourism, you know, I mean, the, the best place to set up a tourist industry, you know, would be uh, in Egypt. Why? Why? Is that? Yeah. 
not only are there the pyramids, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that one, one, you know, I mean, th these are historical monuments mm -hmm. uh, of unparalleled, uh, if you like, proportion uh, in the history of humankind. And, um, you know, it attracts so many people. Now, how can one go in here with, I mean, when you think of tourism, you're thinking about restaurants, you're thinking about hotel, the hotel industry, you know, you're thinking about fashion. And, uh, you know, Egypt is very moderate in terms of its political orientation. I mean, we can think of Morocco, we can think of Algeria, Tunisia, you know, these are places where one can do, uh, you know, very strong business. Uh, and, and remember, we're also talking about what the ocean. So if mm -hmm. one was interested in, you know, uh, fishing, you know, as an industry, mm -hmm. you know, this would be a very uh, big place uh, to go to. Now, um, of course, we don't have to forget about oil, you know, uh, and uh, there are oil deposits in these areas, and I will talk uh, uh, more about that. Now, let's also look at West Africa. Okay. You know, West Africa, uh, of course, does have a very close connection with the United States in a number of ways, in the sense that uh, not only, I mean, does that connection go back, you know, uh, where Africans were brought to the Americas, you know, so there's that historical connection. Uh, but not just that. Um, I mean, the U.S. and Africa, you know, has been uh, connected in a number of ways. I mean, you look at our histories uh, during the uh, struggle, I mean, in linguist, as a linguist, you know, I like to uh, use linguistic terms sometimes. During the period of the ethnic revolution, Survival, you know, uh, in the 60s, we see Africans and African Americans coming together. Now, if one was interested in tourism, you know, that would be another good place to go to. Why am I saying this? Yeah. Because, um, you know, Ghana, for example, has what it calls the landed right for Africans in the diaspora. So you have tons, you know, and we're talking about thousands, you know, of uh, people of African descent going to Ghana to settle. And also, to, I mean, they are tourists. So, I mean, you're talking about um, very, very beautiful tourist resorts, mm. the hotel industry, you know, you go to Ghana now, go to Nigeria, go to Senegal, you know, go to um, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, all these places, you know, are yearning for, you know, people to come and invest in the hotel industry, not just the hotel industry. I mean, if you're looking at, you know, minerals, you know, I'm talking about diamonds, I'm talking about gold, I'm talking about bauxite, manganese, you know, now, Ghana, for example, used to be called the Gold Coast. <laughs> and mm -hmm. why is that the case? You know, there's abundance of gold. And um, in fact, Ghana's gold is listed on the stock market here in the U.S. So, you know, what you find is that if there is an industry, you know, that is thinking of investing in Africa, you know, I mean, diamonds, gold, bauxite, all this timber, mm -hmm. you know. Now, Europe has done very well you know, trading with Africa. But I think the U.S. can even do better given the historical connections. And so this would be an area uh, that one has to uh, look at. Now, when you go to Central Africa, um, here I'm thinking about, you know, the Central African Republic. I'm thinking about um, even parts of West Africa. You know, I'm thinking about Niger, Mali. You know, if one was looking at the defense industry, you know, these places would be a very important place to go to. Why? Mm -hmm. There are, you know, tons of deposits of uranium, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and uh, I mean, these obviously we know the relevance of these in um, what do you call it, atomic bomb, I mean, um, energy and whatever have you. Now, that also brings me to another point, you know, which is that now these days we're talking about clean energy. <laughs> if one was interested in, in investing in clean energy, you know, the sun shines forever, mm -hmm. you know. And so how about solar energy? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, one can, and you see, again, when one thinks of Africa, the tendency is to think of Africa as a place where people don't have money. That's not the case, mm -hmm. you know. If one established, you know, such an industry, such as solar industry, you know, one can make tons of money. There, there's abundance of water. I'm talking about rivers, you know. So even if one wants to invest in hydroelectricity, you know, one can do this. You know, you're thinking about the Niger, the Congo, the Nile, the Zambezi. You know, it's all over the place, the Volta. You know, so, I mean, one can make a lot of money investing in hydroelectricity. Um, now, um, when you go to Southern Africa, again, we're talking about gold in South Africa. We're talking about um, 
diamonds. You know, Botswana has some of the biggest diamond deposits on earth. You know, and so, I mean, if one was looking at uh, minerals, what in geography, you know, is referred to as the rubbery industry. These are things you take from the earth and you don't replace the readily. The rubbery uh -huh. industry. You know, so, I mean, again, gold, diamond, bauxite, whatever have you, tons of deposits in Africa. And um, if anybody was, you know, looking at, uh, you know, extracting these. Now, what I'm thinking of is not just, you know, digging up these and taking them out of the place. I'm thinking about processing. You know, processing these into jewelry, you know, and these days... And processing you know, on the ground there. You, you could process them there, you could process them in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I mean, these days, you know, one doesn't want to think about um, outsourcing, you know, jobs and stuff like that. So, you know, you can have the company in Africa and you can have a subsidiary company in the U.S. where, you know, you can do semi-processing, you know, um, in some African countries, you can do some of the processing in the U.S., by, by, that, by doing that, you can create jobs in both places. You know? And then in East Africa, we all know about the tourism industry. In Kenya, in Tanzania, you, you've heard of the Serengeti, you know, where you have tons of wild uh, animals that people can yeah. go visit and see. But even it goes beyond that. Again, you know, um, given the abundance of water resources, you know, in, in, in these places, you know, one can go into agribusiness. One can go in, and by agribusiness, I'm talking about agricultural, so mechanical, you know, I mean, and here we're thinking about tractors, we're thinking about combined harvesters, you know, we're thinking about various irrigating or irrigation equipment. You and, know. and which region do you see agribusiness? Well, agribusiness can thrive in the, the, the rainforest area, the Sahel, as well as the savanna areas, and these cut across uh, the continent. Okay. You know, so there are tons of opportunities for one to invest in, in Africa, you know, and of course, we don't have to forget the human capital, you know, and I think that's the most, uh, as far as I'm concerned as an educator, that's the most important industry, you know, that one can invest in. And what do I mean by that, you know? One can build schools and universities and make money out of it. Now, you look at a, a small country like Ghana, you know, and you look at the universities that are springing up, private universities, and people are paying you know, to go to these universities. You know, um, I mean, I got my degree, obviously, in England, <laughs> but if there were facilities in, 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 in Ghana, mm -hmm. you, know, you would have a lot of people studying you know, in Africa. So I'm encouraging you know, business people who are interested in human capital to invest in education, building private universities, even building high schools, you know, people who will be willing to pay for a good education. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also thinking about the book industry. You know, if you think about human capital, then the book industry is also a very important industry. So if I'm a publisher, where should I locate? Well, if you're a publisher, now, there are a couple of places I can think of. South Africa, you can think of West Africa. You know, in, South, in Southern Africa, I can think about South Africa itself, you know. But then also, I mean, if you want to maximize profit, you know, you also look at places where, you know, income isn't, you know, astronomical. Now, you don't want to go and underpay people. However, you have to look at the income level, you know, and raise it a bit. So I'm thinking about small countries like Lesotho, you know, I'm thinking about small countries like, um, what do you call it, um, Swaziland, you know, and if you went to West Africa, I'm thinking about Ghana, I'm thinking about Togo, um, Liberia, you know, Liberia is emerging from war. And, you know, that kind of can scare people. But the good thing is that they do have a precedent, you know, who knows what she's doing, a Harvard educated uh, uh, individual, you know, who knows what she's doing. There is peace in the country now, and they will need human capital investment. They would, in fact, they have tons of resources. I mean, um, diamonds, yeah. you know, <laughs> we're thinking about even rubber, the, the plant from which you get, you know, um, um, rubber. So, I mean, Liberia will be a very good place. And in fact, IU now has a, an exchange, we, we're trying to tie up an exchange program with, with Liberia as a place. So in fact, we do have an exchange program with 14 African countries, and we're trying to build, you know, or develop uh, some of these uh, new initiatives also. So, I mean, if you look at the continent, be it human capital, be it minerals, be it textile, you know, we haven't talked about the textile industry. 
You know, the textile industry is a very big business uh, that one can go into. And here I'm thinking about West Africa. I'm thinking about parts of North Africa also, you know, where, you know, you can grow cotton. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, here you, you grow the cotton, you, I mean, have industry, you establish industries where you can, you know, clothe them. You know, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about shirts, I'm thinking about, you know, pants and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And these can be made, you know, very, very inexpensively, you know, on the continent. And it only takes, you know, someone to say, look, I'm going to do it, and they can do it. I mean, are there risks? Right. Well, I would say that, I mean, there is risk in doing business in the U.S. And the risk, you know, in, in, in Africa, you know, wouldn't outweigh those of the U.S. and we can talk more about this. So now that we've seen where we might actually want to do the business, once we're there, can we make any money? I mean, after taxes on capital that we send in, regulations on investments, can we get the money sent back to the U.S.? Is it possible to be profitable? Absolutely, without a doubt. I mean, um, most African countries allows, I mean, what, what, what they allow is this. You can take your money in, that's you can invest. Now there are uh, guidelines for investment. Um, you would have, it, let me talk about Ghana and say South Africa, you know. Uh, you get in touch with the Ghana Investment Promotion Council, Ghana Investment Promotion Council. And um, what, what they do is that you register, you know, the name of your company, you know. If it is an agro industry, you don't pay tax on you know, the equipment that you take there. Okay. So let's assume that we're going to invest you know, in irrigation, in uh, the making of tractors, or you know, important tractors, or parts, spare parts and stuff like that. You know, once it is agro-based industry, you don't pay taxes on the equipment. Now, um, your finished products, can you market them in Africa? Can you, yes, you're free to market your products. You're free to, you know, uh, what do you call it, export your products. Mm -hmm. Now, there is what is called, and this doesn't apply to all countries, you know, in some countries you pay tax, you know, um, on the products if the products are being shipped out, you know. But, you know, the taxation there, uh, sometimes called value added tax, I, I can assure you that it's not as big as, you know, one would even pay in the U.S. In other words, the tax system is liberal in the sense that, you know, you're not taxed an arm and a leg. <laughs> Okay. You know, um, and then also, I mean, you see, once, once you register the company, you know, um, you can, what do you call it, employ people. Mm -hmm. Is there human capital? Well, yes. I mean, uh, in quite a number of places, uh, you can employ, you can find people there to employ. In other places, you may have to bring some people who are expertise, you know, to teach the people. I mean, in case you wanted to, you know, have local um, employees. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and as I said, you can, you know, repatriate you know, your profits. And I don't think anybody can stop you, you know, okay. um, or will stop you. That's a better word. Nobody's going to stop you from, you know, uh, bringing your profits back. Um, can you make uh, good money? My answer is yes. Can we survive the red tape? The World Bank has slammed Africa in the past on being a very difficult place to do business. Now, granted, in this most recent 2009 Doing Business report, they acknowledge that there's been immense regulatory reform, but how's that going to work for us? Now, that, that kind of myth sometimes is associated with the political situation on the continent. You know, in the 70s and early 80s, you know, there were quite a number of countries that were under military dictatorship. Mm -hmm. You know, things are changing. And quite, I mean, day in, day out, or year in, year out, you know, there is, uh, Africa is becoming democratic in the sense that the opposition is becoming strong and educated. You know, parliament is becoming educated, and that is very helpful. It is only when you have an uneducated parliament, you know, that you do have red tapes and stuff like that. Now, um, this is not to suggest that you won't find problems in certain places. Um, I would look at the kind of politics that is in that particular country. Is there a, a military dictatorship? And I can tell you that there aren't many of such uh, places, you know. So, I mean, if you take 54 countries, you can count more than six where there are military uh, dictatorships, you know. Most of them have a form of democracy. It may not be as developed as the American democracy, but as I'm saying, I mean, it, it is developed, you know, to an extent that, um, what do you call it, uh, I mean, doing business isn't 
much of a headache as it was in the 70s, 80s, and even part of the 90s. Now, um, is there bribery? Absolutely. Is there bribery? Bribery. Oh, bribery. You know, mm -hmm. there, are, there are times where, uh, I mean, you go to an office uh, and, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's, it's, it can be annoying sometimes. Mm -hmm. so let, let's be honest here. However, however, the most important thing is this. That is minimal. You know, it is very, very minimal. There are places where, you know, I mean, this is the point. If you are an investor, you know, the play, I mean, there are a couple of places where you go to and you won't have a problem. When I say places, I'm talking about offices, not countries. Yeah. You know, if you go to the Internal Revenue Office, for example, I don't see how you're going to have a problem. If you go to the Investment Promotion Council, uh, I don't see how you're going to have a problem registering your company. Now, if there, is the, if there are delays anywhere, and this is one thing that uh, you know, uh, foreign investors should know, you know, the most important thing is to you know, stay strong and tell people, hey, you know what, I, I need this done. Yeah. They realize that they, they need help. They realize the importance of such industries. So I would say in the past, yes, I mean, there were, there were all these red tapes mm -hmm. and things didn't move as fast as they ought to. These days, things can even be done online. Oh, great. You know, okay. so, I mean, things have changed considerably. Good. And um, I would say that uh, the, you know, the occurrence, you know, of red taping, if we should put it that way, mm -hmm. you know, has been minimized. Uh, not completely eliminated, sure. but it's been minimized to the, same, to the extent that, um, you know, one can do business, you know, without fear of delays and of one losing one's money. Good. Well, actually, that's a great lead in to my next question, because I've bought into this myth that the red tape was so rampant that it was almost impossible to do business in Africa. And obviously that has really changed. I'm wondering what other myths or misunderstandings perhaps have businesses bought into that you could set the record straight on today? Well, many a time uh, when one hear of or think about Africa, the tendency, you know, is to assume that uh, it's just you know, mono, you know, um, racial, you know, just one a single race, race uh -huh. you know, uh, and um, now that is not the case. Africa is very multiracial. Hmm. I mean, there are Caucasians, and I can mention countries. I mean, if you go to um, South Africa, you know, <clears throat> South Africa has uh, descendants of who are from Dutch, from England. You know, there are, there is a big Chinese population. Uh, in, South Af in Southern Africa, there is an Indian population, you know, in Southern and East Africa. And, I mean, you, you go to North Africa, it's, uh, I mean, a combination of Arabs and Africans, you know. So, and then, of course, even um, you go to West Africa, you know, you have a very big, f I mean, French presence and English presence. I mean, the, 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 the British, you go to Angola, you know, uh, Mozambique, and you have Portuguese presence. Mm. So, I mean, because of our, of our unique history, you know, because Africa, you know, went through different kinds of colonialism uh, and whatever have you, I mean, th there is a, a large population, you know, of uh, people of different ethnic uh, origins. In fact, take Madagascar, for example. Madagascar has one of the, you know, I, I call that um, a microcosm. I mean, it, it is one small country, you know, that, you know, is so uh, multiracial. You have Asians, the Malay people, you have uh, black Africans like me, you know, um, you have Caucasians, you have, Fr I mean, the French, you know, so everyone is wow. in Madagascar, for example. And you see, we didn't uh, talk about Madagascar the first time. I mean, it is one country in Africa that is unique in the sense that it has some of the, uh, what do you call it, uh, unique animals on earth that one would see anywhere else. You know, you won't find those animals anywhere else. I mean, it has unique people, it has unique culture. I mean, and um, tourism, you know, is, is such a booming industry in Madagascar mm -hmm. that uh, if one was looking for a place to invest, you know, in terms of hotels and restaurants and uh, whatever have you, anything connected with tourism, you know, Madagascar will also be, um, wonderful uh, place to go to, to make money. To make money, <laughs> which yes. is what our listeners are all about. If we should decide to do business in or with Africa, what are some of the most important questions a business should ask itself? Well, I, I think um, it's a very good question. 
for any businessman, you know, poses a couple of questions before they go into business. And the first question is, what business does one want to do? If you determine what you want to invest in, you know, you've answered a considerable part of your uh, business question. And the reason I'm saying this is that, I mean, Africa is such a huge continent. You know, it has, you know, some of the best human and natural resources on earth. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, the most important question is to ask, what do I want to invest in? If you want to invest in um, what do you call the beverage industry, you know, well, I would say West Africa would be a very good place to go to. Why? There is cocoa, mm -hmm. there is coffee, and also East Africa, by the way. You know, there is cocoa, there is coffee, you know. And so, I mean, well, by the way, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana alone, you know, produce, you know, so much of the world's uh, cocoa, you know. In fact, uh, Cote d'Ivoire is now the world's leading producer of cocoa, followed very closely by Ghana. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to set up a chocolate industry, you know, where do you go to? You go to West Africa, you know. So the first thing is to determine what kind of business do I want. Now you also want to determine the human capital, you know, in the place. In other words, you're looking at, you know, the, the level of salary, the know-how of the people. I mean, I mean, can you have labor? Mm -hmm. What kind of labor are you looking for? Can you have that kind of labor? How much will labor cost? And how will that cost affect your business? You know, and so, I mean, the, I mean again, you know, there are places where, I mean, depending on the kind of education, you know, that you want. If you wanted to set up shoe industry, mm -hmm. you know, to make shoes, I would say go to Botswana or Kenya. Why? There are tons of cattle. Of, you know, of, cattle, C-A-T-T-L-E, yeah, yeah. cattle, yeah. you know. Um, you can have tons of sheep, goats. So, I mean, the, the hide you know, mm -hmm. or skin I mean, of these animals is going to be in abundance. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the cost involved, you know, the cost of the raw materials is going to be very cheap, you know, because they are producing abundance there. Now, you can also have uh, an inexpensive labor because mm -hmm. there are people who've worked on these yeah. animals forever and know how to do it. And your, your capital, I mean, the amount of money needed to invest in such a business in that particular locality isn't going to be too big. Mm -hmm. So know. I ask myself, what kind of business do I want to be in? And I yes. ask myself, is the human capital, is the labor available for yes, me Yes, the human and natural resources, human and capital resources. And, and resources. Uh -huh. You know, is there the human capital? Are the resources available? And then also, obviously, you look at, you know, distribution. Uh, third question. You know, how can I distribute what I produce? Mm -hmm. Now, you ask a very important question. Would there be overtaxation? Would there be restriction on how much of my profit I can repatriate home? You know, um, so you, you ask those questions. Now you look at individual countries and you see the specific, you know, rules on business. And then you determine, okay, if I want to set up an industry, you know, where I produce uranium, you know, maybe it may be cheaper to go to Niger than say, you know, uh, other part of West Africa where there will be no uranium, or, you know, because the business atmosphere in Niger might be, you know, more conducive, you know, to producing ur uranium than any other um, part of the continent. So um, you, you think about distribution, you think about your profits, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, what kind of profit margin you are thinking about. I think that's also very essential. And then these days, you know, we also have to think about uh, what you call term, how will that business impact employment back home in the U.S.? You know, is it possible to set up a subsidiary of the company in the U.S.? And you, you can always do that and still balance it out because, I mean, um, the cost of um, labor might be inexpensive on the continent. It might be a little high in the U.S., but if you balance the two, you know, you can create jobs back home here in the U.S. and also, you know, good paying jobs on the continent. So, I mean, these are basic questions that one has to ask, you know, if one wants to set up a good business and make money. Which sounds like it's absolutely possible to do. Well, thank you, Dr. Obeng, for sharing your expertise with us today. I know we've only scratched the surface of your wisdom, but already that's been immensely helpful to us. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me. And thank you for watching this Cyber Focus. Make sure you check out the other two Cyber Focus spots focusing on Africa and doing business.